For whatever reason, The Sims team has like completely stopped making stuff packs and seemingly replaced them with kits. Stuff packs used to be slightly bigger packs, they had big sets of clothes, furniture, and some gameplay. But now we only get kits, which are like half the price, but also kind of only like a third of the content. Instead of all three of those things, we might get just one small build set or a small bit of clothing. And they're releasing them at like ridiculous frequency. We have so many kits now. But I'm over here still kind of more the loss of stuff packs. So today I want to go through every single stuff pack they ever made for The Sims 4 and I want to try and rank them. Basically I want to talk about which ones I think are really good, which ones I think are really bad, and which ones are worth buying. I've done this for all of the packs now, for expansion packs, game packs, and kits, so we finally are getting to the stuff packs. I feel like I should first clarify that they didn't ever like officially stop making stuff packs, they never actually said that. Just the last time we got a stuff pack was paranormal stuff and that came out on January January 26th of 2021, so it's been like two years. At this point, I've kind of given up hope that we'll ever get a stuff pack ever again, especially considering how many kits they've been releasing. In total, we had 18 stuff packs, and now we already have 17 kits. So unfortunately, things are not looking good for our little stuff pack friends. But this is the categories I've set up to rank them. At the very top, we have must have, and then going down from there, I've got really good, decent, not worth buying, and delete because I have some strong opinions about a few of these. Now obviously, disclaimer, this is just my personal opinion based on my gameplay with them. You might have the exact opposite opinion, you might love one of these that I hate, and that's totally fine. I'm gonna try and walk you through what comes in the packs and how I use them. I'm gonna mostly base this on whether or not I think the pack is worth the money. I'm gonna base most of this on whether or not I think the pack is worth the money, or like at least worth buying compared to the others, because some of these, especially the older packs, genuinely have like a third of the content. So for example, Luxury Party, bottom, bottom, bottom tier, but Paranormal is like top, top of the line, and I'm gonna explain why. Starting, of course, with Luxury Party, the first ever stuff pack for The Sims 4. Now, because it was the first one, this one sucks. I'm gonna put it bluntly, most of the older packs in The Sims 4 tend to just be a little bit worse. They've got less stuff, the gameplay is less useful, and they seem to have gotten a lot better as time has gone on. So typically, it's a, a pretty sliding scale of early bad, later good. This one though is like really bad. Now the whole concept is that it's got some stuff to throw a fancy party. So it's got some kind of interesting cast. There's a couple things that I like, for example this dress and also this glitter suit I genuinely use a lot. But otherwise a couple hairs are nice, most of the makeup is actually kind of weird. The build mode is so pitiful, it like fills me with rage. This thing is literally just a glowing cube and that's probably the best item in the whole pack. I mean it's got like a chair and a table, it came with a bar, whatever. We also got this buffet table, this was the main gameplay item. It's basically a buffet table that you can have your sim serve and it fills with like six dishes. And it has this little fountain so you can fill it with punch or like cheese or whatever. In reality, I like never use the fountain part. I do use the buffet table a fair amount. It's actually really useful for parties and it's pretty useful for things like the 100 baby challenge because you can just buy a bunch of really nice food and then save it in your fridge. But they just recently gave us another one of these in the wedding pack. So if you have the wedding pack, there is literally no point in buying this one. There is nothing good in this. This for me is like top of the list pack. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> this for me is like top of the list packs that I hope they would refresh. Not because I like like this pack, but because I think that right now it's not worth $10. Like if you bought this pack, I feel as though you have wasted money. I don't mean that as like a dig to you, like, oh, you suck for buying it. I mean like the pack sucks and when you compare it to the others, it's just not worth the money in comparison. There's just nothing to do, the pack is just kind of bad. And while it maybe has a few redeeming qualities, I honestly believe that Luxury Party is the worst pack ever made for The Sims 4, so I'm putting it at the very bottom. Delete. After that, we got Perfect Patio, and when this pack came out, I really liked it. It has kind of a disappointing amount of cast, but most of it's cute. I use this crop top and this swimsuit a lot. This was more of a build mode pack, you can see it's got like a way bigger build mode section. This was more of a building pack for like designing a nice patio space. It honestly has a lot of really nice patio furniture, and it was the first set that we got that kind of worked as an outdoor kitchen. It also has 
some new counters, which is really useful. There's a matching bar and grill for those counters, and I use those things and this table all the time. It also has one of my favorite fences in the game, so I genuinely like this pack a lot. The main selling point was the hot tub, though, and at the time, this was a huge gameplay feature because we didn't have hot tubs yet. They added a new woohoo spot so your sims can woohoo in the hot tubs. This was like really, really cool when it came out, but then on the sims 20th anniversary, they added a base game hot tub. Granted, it's kind of an ugly base game hot tub, but they made that hot tub gameplay base game, which kind of angered a lot of people because a lot of us bought this pack specifically for the hot tub, and you might not care about the build stuff that much. So unless you like really, really love the items in this pack, you don't really need it because that main selling point has been added to the base game now. I do like it, I think it's good, but I'm just gonna put it at decent, mostly because we don't really need it anymore. Seems we have a helper who has come to help discuss the cool kitchen stuff pack. This one's kind of weird, I can't lie. This actually has some things that I use all the time, specifically the fridge and the stove and the sink. I also love this range hood because it's got a light on it. There's some really nice kitchen clutter like this plate rack, salt and pepper shaker, these really cute cookbooks. The gameplay though, or like gameplay in this pack is just this little ice cream maker. Your sims can like make ice cream. It's just a small kitchen appliance. Okay. <laughs> It just sits on the counter and, and your sims can eat ice cream. It's kind of cute, there's some fun new recipes they added, but realistically it's not like groundbreaking. In fact, it's kind of annoying. Just in general, the small kitchen appliances kind of need tuned. You know how your sims are like always making coffee for no reason and then it just like spoils in there? The same goes for the ice cream. So while it's kind of cool, it isn't like a huge deal. The cast is also not really my favorite. There's not really anything in here that I'm like obsessed with. Usually I'm really, really swayed by any set that adds in new kitchen items because I feel so- oh my god, she's back. Because <laughs> I feel so desperate to have more like counters and stuff, but unfortunately I just think the swatches are kind of weird on these and like the upper cabinets only have this frosted glass. There's no like plain version. Well there is, but it's just like one end piece. I feel like the frosted glass should have been an accent and not like the whole thing, so I don't really use these kitchen cabinets that much. Thinking back on it, I actually can't remember the last time I used them in a house, so they're not really a huge deal to me. I'm kind of stuck between decent and not worth buying with this, but when I think about the other packs, there is more that have better gameplay that I would probably recommend over this one. And then we got the spooky stuff pack, which was also kind of a flop in my opinion. Keeping in mind that this came out pre-season, so we didn't really have like anything holiday related in the game yet. It actually is kind of cute because we got a bunch of really fun Halloween costumes in this pack. So these obviously aren't like everyday type of create a sim items, but they are fun for special occasions. The Build items are very much like Halloween decor and not like building a haunted house type of vibes though. So if you wanted to buy this in hopes of like making a scary mansion, this won't really work. It's got like a glow in the dark ghost wallpaper and pumpkin decor. These paintings are kind of cool because they change in build mode. I also used to use this wood floor a lot because it looks kind of like old and destroyed. But some of these things like these little lights I literally never use. And then in seasons they actually gave us a recolor of these graves and this pumpkin light. So if you have seasons, you already have two of these things just in a couple different swatches. The gameplay of this was this little pumpkin bowl and this pumpkin carving station. The candy bowl is kind of cute. When your sims get candy out of it, it might like grab their hand and play a little trick on them. It's not like a huge game changing thing, but it is kind of fun for the holidays. And the pumpkin carving is genuinely kind of cool. Your sims build the handiness skill by carving pumpkins. And there's a bunch of different variants you can make. Like as far as the other packs that we've talked about so far go, this one actually has probably the most gameplay, or at least the most new gameplay. When I'm thinking about how I would rank packs, I usually think about which ones I use the most often and which fit into my like most normal regular gameplay. And honestly, I don't use this stuff that often. Around Halloween, I made some like pumpkin houses and, and did some pumpkin carving, but like that's very seasonal in real life. Like I don't even have my Sims bother celebrating Halloween in game, to be honest. It was just like, you know, last October I was using it. This kind of thing is really fun fun for people who like really, really love Halloween though. I'm just not really one of those people. If I wasn't a YouTuber, I probably wouldn't buy this pack, but also I don't really like Halloween that much. I know this is a very controversial opinion, but I was just a very anxious child and Halloween scared me when I was younger. I don't like monsters and ghosts and stuff like that, so I, I don't know, I just, I'm not really into it, so it's not for me. But call that more like not for me and not really not worth buying.
if that makes sense. Then we have Movie Hangout, and this one actually has some really fun casts and some really fun build items. There's a lot of like really colorful, kind of maximalist, cute decor. Also a lot of really cool movie posters in this pack. We got this giant movie screen that you can use to watch the movies, and you can also just watch movies on your Sims regular TV. So the gameplay is, is just movies. It adds movies to your Sims televisions, and they can watch them together, and there's like some interactions you can do, like discuss the movie, or like pick a favorite genre, or whatever. It also came with a popcorn maker, which is pretty much the exact same as the ice cream maker from earlier, but it's popcorn instead. This pack is really cute, and the movies are actually really fun. If you haven't watched them, you can like in-game, you know, watch your Sims TV. There's some fun story to them. There's like kind of some references and stuff to it. It actually is really cute, but like gameplay-wise, this is no different than if your Sims just watch TV together. It's just like a, a different thing for you to watch. It's almost better for you than for them, because there's a new movie for you to see. It's fine. I probably put it between decent or not worth buying. Gameplay wise, the new feature isn't really huge, but it's still got some really nice furniture and clothes and stuff, so I'm gonna put it up a little bit higher. Romantic garden stuff though is really underrated, I feel like. This pack honestly has some really cute stuff. There's some really nice clothing in it. I use a lot of these things all the time, and in build mode, there's a lot of garden items, and we don't really get a lot of new landscaping in the game, so it's really fun to have all these new flower options. Some of this stuff I don't use that often, like I think these two flowers are ugly, to be honest. There's also some kind of weird statues that are really beautiful, but just not things that I put in my everyday builds. But the gameplay of this pack is my favorite one out of all of the stuff packs. There's two things, there's this giant fountain, it's cute because like kids can play inside of it, they can't do that in the other fountains. And it's also a lot bigger than the other fountains that we have in the game. I think, for example, most of the fountains are more similar to this size, like a small fountain to put in the middle of a garden. This is more of like a plaza kind of fountain. It's very large. And you can like splash in it. These sims are splashing each other. The kids are in there. And then it also came with the wishing well. And this wishing well is my favorite gameplay item they ever added in a stuff pack. I don't think I appreciated this enough when it first came out. But with this, your sims can make a wish with like a varying amount of simoleons. And there's a little bit of luck involved. Obviously, if you give some more money, it's more likely to be good. But you can get lucky with just one simoleon. Well, you like give money to the well and then you make a wish for something. So you could wish for money, you could wish for a child, you could wish for love, and then there's a chance of having a good, neutral, or bad outcome from that. So for example, if you wished for money but the well was angry at you, it might like take a bunch of your money away. Or if you wished for love and the well wasn't so pleased, it might like spawn a sim that you hate but have a full romance bar with, like an enemies to lovers kind of vibe. Or maybe it'll just make you flirty or something. You don't really know what to expect, and it's really, really funny. I have had so much fun with this well. I don't know if I can put it all the way up to like must have, because it's not like the perfect pack, but the gameplay is actually pretty fun, and I use it a lot, so I'm gonna put it up at really good. It's kind of a solid pack, and it's got a lot in every category, like in build, cast, and in gameplay. Next, we got the kids' room stuff pack, and this one is really good just because we don't really have a lot of stuff for kids in the game, so it's just always nice to get more stuff for them right? So obviously it has a bunch of kids cast, there's like some new hairstyles, and a bunch of cute little t-shirts and stuff. I really like how this one has a sims face on it, like it's merch or something. And there's some kind of cute like taco cat or guitar cat type of outfits. Build mode though, I think is the main selling point from this one. It's got some really good kids room furniture. It's got a new bed and it's really cute. There's a bunch of fun like bookshelves. This toy box I use a lot, it's kind of like disguised as a chest, which is nice. Also I love this rocket ship lamp. I use use that all the time. I love that sort of cute stuff. And in this pack, they kind of introduced some lore. They made these new void critters, and it's kind of like Pokemon, basically, but in the game. So the gameplay is this, like, void critter station, and you can buy the packs and try and, like, complete the collection of all of them. And so they also added, like, some void critter posters and some void critter wall decals. And ever since this pack, they've, like, added in other void critter things into other packs. They've sort of, like, created a brand within a brand, and I like that kind of thing. They also added this puppet show item, which I always forget about and is actually really cute. Your kids can like play with puppet shows inside the little stage theater. Honestly, I, I don't know when I last used either of these things, but I probably should use them more because they're really fun. I really, really love any time they add family gameplay and stuff for kids and toddlers specifically, so I'm gonna put that- oops, wrong pack. <laughs> Sorry. Kids room. I'm gonna put that way up to really good. I just always want more stuff like that, and I really like this one. Then we got the backyard stuff pack, and I will 
will say I am a little bit biased towards this one because this was the first pack they ever gave me early access to. I had like 20,000 subscribers on YouTube and I got an email from the old CM at the time and they offered me a code for the pack and it was like truly the greatest day of my entire life. So I have very fond memories of playing with this one, but this is kind of like perfect patio if it were more family based. So it also has a bunch of like patio type furniture, but it's a little bit more cutesy than like the more formal modern stuff from the other pack. There's some really nice like plants and like garden decor. The clothing is pretty fun. Nothing super stand out, but it's fine. Now, as far as gameplay goes, there's a couple weird ones. So this little item is a lemonade tray. It kind of works like a bar, how your Sims can get drinks from it, but you just like put it on a table and have your Sim fill it with lemonade. And then it makes six little glasses for your Sims to take. Really useful and really cute gameplay thing that I find myself putting in a lot of kitchens. This item, this bird feeder is like a little mini gameplay thing. I don't know if they have a picture of it. Oh, they do. Your Sims can fill the bird feeder and then it animates with birds coming to it. It's just like a little VFX thing, kind of like the little fireflies and stuff that you can place now with the terrain tools. But it is kind of cute because you can like have birds flying in your backyard. But most importantly, they gave us these water slides. There's two of them. And your Sims like run and play in the slip and slide basically. These are kind of hard to use because they're enormous. They don't really fit in a lot of backyards. But when you can place them, they are really, really fun. I've placed these like at the park in Willow Creek before too, just so I have like an easier space to go and use them without having like a giant shark in my backyard. And there's some really cute animations. Your Sims can like wipe out and fall and it, it's really good. You can also prank it and add soap to it and stuff. This is a really fun feature. To me, this is definitely one of the more unique gameplay features they've added and they haven't like stolen that and put it in something else like the hot tubs. So I'm gonna put that all the way up at really good. I really, really enjoy that pack. I also use that one more than kids room stuff, I think. All right, now vintage glamour is kind of a weird one. This pack has some really glamorous, fancy clothing and furniture. Obviously that's kind of the goal. This is not really my personal style. Like I don't really find myself drawn towards most of these things. A lot of this I never ever use. Honestly, I kind of dislike the beds that it came with, but it has a few really nice items. This fireplace is pretty good. It's kind of art deco vibes. There's some really nice lights in it. Now, as far as gameplay goes, this item, this globe is actually a bar. Your Sims can use it just like any of the other bars, but instead of needing like a full formal bar, it's just like like a little globe. So it's kind of fancy and it's easier to fit into your builds if you need a bar. I like to use that when I'm making like really formal offices and stuff. I don't know why I'm putting a bar in the office, but that's that's where I've put it usually. They also added vanity tables into this pack and your Sims can really do their makeup at them. Now, I don't find myself actually using it all that often because when you do it in game, you can like pick a preset of makeup and then the Sim puts it on. And I don't really love a lot of the, the makeup in the game, so I don't really have the game do my Sims makeup much, as you might imagine. But for like story purposes, it's kind of cute to have your Sims be able to actually do their makeup. And it's nice to have a vanity table. They gave us two options of it. There's like a more modern one and a more traditional one as well. And then the main gameplay item is they added butlers, like actual butler gameplay, which actually is really cool because when you compare it to the older stuff packs, the older stuff packs would have like just given you the vanity table and called that the main feature. But this one has butlers, so you can actually hire a butler like from your sims phone like how you would hire a maid or a babysitter or whatever and when the butler comes they like move into your house almost like a roommate because you aren't controlling them but you give them a bedroom and you assign them a bed and stuff and then they live in your house and they like clean they'll take care of the babies they'll cook for you it's kind of expensive but it's really really useful i've kind of used it for story purposes before like when i was playing the black widow challenge it seemed like they would probably have a butler you know or in like the 100 baby challenge when i just desperately needed the help. I will say that my average sim doesn't usually have a butler, but it is kind of fun if you want to play like that. So you can kind of see what I mean with how the newer packs have like way more in them. This one, for example, has like twice as much as Luxury Party did, like twice as many clothes, maybe like three times as many build items and way more gameplay. Like when you compare these two things, Vintage Glamour is like way more worth it than Luxury Party is. Oh my god, my cat's being a little bit chaotic, please ignore. But in reality, I don't actually use most of this that often, so I'm 
gonna put it just at decent. It's definitely a solid pack, but it's not my favorite. And then we have Bowling Night, and this one is like such a random addition to the game, I feel like. It's got a bunch of clothing, mostly like bowling clothes, like bowling shirts and bowling shoes, but also a couple kind of cute outfits. This skirt and these shorts are some of my favorites out of all of the game. Build mode is, is kind of mid-century modern almost, plus like a bunch of bowling alley type of stuff. So we have like a bowling ball rack, and we have this bar that's really good for like more of a community lot setting. The swatches that it's showing here are all black, which is not really the vibes. You can kind of see better in the screenshots what it looks like. It's really all very colorful and bright, lots of like oranges and blues. And this one actually just pre-adds a lot to your library so that you can place it in your save. It's like a big bowling alley that fits in Oasis Springs pretty well. They added all this bowling stuff, but it's not a new lot type. There isn't like a bowling alley lot. It just works when you put it on a bar lot. So if you've got a bar with bowling things, the Sims will behave accordingly. This one's pretty cool because one, it's really different from any of the other packs. And two, the gameplay is actually really fun. There's a bowling skill, it's five levels, so they can actually get better at it. The animations are hilarious. They can like totally wipe out and fall when trying to bowl. It's kind of cute to like have your teen Sims go hang out at the bowling alley. I actually use this way more than I thought I would. I really like how it gives my Sims a new hobby and like a whole skill. It seems like a way more valuable gameplay feature than like an ice cream machine does, because that just like uses the cooking skill and it's like a cute snack. But by comparison, Bowling Night is way better. I'm gonna put it way up at really good, actually. And then we got the fitness stuff pack. And this one, I, I just don't really use. If I'm being honest, I would rank this really low. The stuff is kind of cute. It's got some nice workout gear, but not really as much as I would like to have seen. I do love a couple of these hairs a lot, but like that's kind of it. The build items, I really, really don't find myself using. It has a weird combination of like a couple bathroom things and some gym equipment. So we have like a shower and a sink that I don't love and also like a treadmill. For me, this is all stuff that we kind of have better versions of in the base game or in other packs. So it's not really a huge selling point. I do like these lights. I think these lights are nice. I like this painting and I also like the wallpaper they added, but otherwise there's not really a lot that I use much. The main gameplay feature here was this rock climbing wall. And this actually is pretty cool, I, I won't lie. It's kind of a fun feature, especially now that we have Snowy Escape where you can like climb mountains. I like the idea of like training <laughs> on the rock climbing wall and then practicing on a real mountain afterward. But otherwise, like you just gain the fitness skill and like, you know, your Sims can fall, which is kind of cute. This gameplay item is on a similar level as like the water slides are from Backyard Stuff. It's just one that I find myself using less. So while it's cute and it's fun and it's a, a cool new feature, I personally probably wouldn't recommend the fitness pack unless you're like really into this kind of thing, it's it's just kind of fine. And frankly, I don't really care about like building home gyms, so I don't need more of that. Like we already have stuff like that, so whatever. It's definitely not one of my favorites. But after that, we got the toddler stuff pack, and this one I would rank way more highly. This pack is actually probably one of my favorites out of all of them. First of all, it's got a bunch of toddler clothes, which we really, really desperately need. We don't really have a lot of toddler cast assets, so it's really nice to get more. And we also got a bunch of really cute like toddler gameplay furniture. Not like toddler bedroom furniture, unfortunately. Playground equipment and stuff. Kind of the whole idea of this pack was that you could host play dates. So it adds a new social event. You can plan a play date and like invite other parents and toddlers over. You can obviously kind of build like more toddler friendly playground sets as well because the toddlers can't play in the other gym equipment. This is like specifically toddler sized. I don't really love this dollhouse. So I don't use the dollhouse like ever, but this slide I use all the time. I play a lot of challenges where I'm trying to like quickly get my Sims skills up, and this is really good for building your Sims movement skill very quickly. Also, these string lights are really good. We don't have a lot of string lights. It's always nice to get more string lights. These are some really good string lights, but overall it's not really a builder's pack. It's more of like a cast and gameplay pack. I really do like these big playgrounds. It's just so hard to find a space for them. Also, this ball pit was like the laughing stock of The Sims 4 when the pack first came out. The texture was terrible. Imagine if you found like a really low res picture of a ball pit and like smacked it on a Sims item, scaled it up so it gets even more low res and then just put it in the game. There was no 3D balls. I understand that it's hard to make balls in the game, but like it was, it was 2D completely flat. They've since updated it to be a little bit better, but the ball pit, um, she always makes me laugh when I see her because I remember how bad it used to be. I'm gonna put that way up at must have though, just because we really need more stuff 
for toddlers are it's focusing on my cat's tail. Hello, this is my video. <laughs> we just really need more toddler things. So it's nice to get more things that are specifically for them. And then we have laundry day. And this one's a little bit weird because believe it or not, this was actually a fan voted stuff pack. They did like a series of surveys where they showed off a bunch of pack ideas and had us vote on them. And then they made a bunch of concept art and had us vote on that. And then we voted on gameplay features and stuff. So we were really heavily involved as a community in the like making of these. There's actually some really cute casts in laundry day and some really, really cute build items. There's a lot of stuff that's nice for building like a utility room kind of vibe, obviously, cause it's, you know, a laundry pack, but also just some really nice, like cute wicker type of clutter items and furniture. Actually this furniture set in game is called the wicker whims set. So it's like the wicker whims chair, which if you're familiar is kind of a reference to the name of a mod for the Sims 4. Wicked whims is a woohoo mod basically. So look that up at your own risk, but it's kind of funny how they like alluded to the name of it. it it's one of the more popular Sims mods, like literally ever. So <laughs> it's just kind of funny. The gameplay of this laundry pack though, is literally just doing laundry. There's two ways you can like wash it by hand and hang it out to dry, or you could use like the washer dryer. In theory, I love the idea of things that add more realism to my game. In practice, Sims are so beyond irritating with this. Like you see how she's picked up a bag of laundry and is walking it to the washer dryer. So often they'll just like, pick it up and then drop it on the floor and they won't bring it over here or they'll like not start the washer when you tell them to or they won't move it when you tell them to. It just, there's so much room for annoyance that I really don't use laundry that much. It is kind of funny because these dryers can catch on fire really easily if you're not cleaning out the lint. And I do love a little bit of room for chaos, but like this pack, it just, the gameplay of it, honestly, I find it annoying. I really, really did love it when it first came out and I loved the idea of it when we were voting for it in the polls. But like, again, in practice, Sims are Sims and Sims are not very smart. So I'm just gonna put this one at decent. I wish I could rank it higher, but like, oh my God, I'm so sick of my Sims laundry glitching that I just, I can't. Oh boy. After that was my first pet stuff. And this one is quite the controversial pack. Now, important to read the fine print here, because if you don't buy cats and dogs, you just don't have all the stuff in the pack. This pack is basically an add-on to cats and dogs. So all of the cast is like a bunch of extra clothing for pets. And I will say it's really cute. The clothing is really cute. It's fun to have like a bee costume for your cat. The build items are kind of weird. There's some very random additions. It's kind of cute. Lots of like kids room type of stuff. There's like a cute cat shaped litter box, an extra pet bowl, some more dog doors. These blinds are actually really nice. I use these a lot. And then the main gameplay was they added rodents that you could play with. So you can see here, this Sim has a hamster and she's like playing with it and feeding it and stuff. Now, the really fun part is that they also added a new death in this pack. Your Sims can randomly get bitten by their rodents. And then from there, they can randomly develop a disease called rabid rodent fever. And then their ghost is gonna be permanently stuck in a rat costume and foaming at the mouth. So it actually is really funny. The death to me is like the best part of the whole pack, but I'm really biased towards packs that have new woohoo types and new deaths. I really like this new rat death. It's very funny to get killed by a rat. But the unfortunate truth is that if you buy this pack and you don't have cats and dogs, think about how many of these items are useless. Like they still give you the dog beds. You just can't use them because you don't have dogs. So you'll have the cat tree and no cat to climb in it, which really, really sucks. I understand that most people would probably not buy this pack if they didn't have cats and dogs. But to me, this whole thing just feels really slimy to like make DLC for DLC. Like why weren't these things just included in cats and dogs in the first place? Why are you making everybody pay an extra $10 for them? It's, it's just really not worth it. So look, the death is really, really good and a major selling point for me. And I would almost put it up at must have just because my Sims can get bitten by rats. But like the fact is a lot of the furniture's weird and you have to buy a different different pack first to get it. I reject that concept. For that reason, I am putting it all the way at the bottom at delete. I hate to say it, but it's almost a bigger flop than luxury party stuff is. And that's saying a lot. And then our flop era continues with the mosquito stuff pack. I call it mosquito like the bug on purpose as an insult. This one is a collab pack with a high-end fashion brand. And so when they released this, a few of these items came out in real life as well. You might recognize that base game hoodie that says mosquito on it. They added that in a free update 
update at the same time. That hoodie in real life costs $600. I don't think it's for sale anymore. It was like a limited time thing, but um, huh? <laughs> $600 hoodie? So you see what I mean when I say flop era? I really, really didn't like the idea of this. Most of the clothing I genuinely hate. Like I don't really use any of these things ever. Although this little bear sweater is kind of cute. The build items are actually kind of fun. It's got like a photo studio sort of vibe. I love this bookshelf. I think this mirror is cool and the gameplay is genuinely really good. In this, they changed how the camera works so you can get better photos of your Sims. So instead of just that giant photo studio we used to have, there's just a tripod and a camera and you can put them anywhere. And you can also bring it in your Sims inventory so you can get way better photos. And I'm the kind of person that loves to have like family photos in game of my Sims. So for me, this is really, really useful. You can kind of see some examples of pictures over here in the back, but genuinely this is like a game changer for me. I don't know what I would do without this and it's even kind of buggy and I still feel that way. It's really hard for me to rank it because I hate the idea of this pack and I hate, I hate that it's a collab. I do appreciate the Sims team's efforts to make it still worthwhile despite the clothing thing, but like the clothing collab part is, is the worst part of this pack. The rest of it is really good. Oh, I'd, I'd almost put it at delete just because of the brand, but like I love, I love the, the photos. I need the photos. I'm, I'm going to put it at must have, but I don't know. I don't think I'm recommending it to you. I'm not sure. It, it's very hard to say. <laughs> this one is really difficult for me. Okay. Maybe I'll put it at really good. No, I can't call it good. Oh, I hate this pack. It's just, it's just the camera. I need the camera and the camera. It's buggy. I'm warning you. It's like this pack sucks, but it, I, but I need it. <laughs> so I'm putting it at the top. I actually have a really funny story about this. When they first announced this pack, they actually announced it in person at a physical event. Back in the day, pre COVID, they used to do these like EA Play events. I don't know if you've heard of like E3 or anything like that. There's a lot of like big gaming conventions where a lot of like big name companies will come and announce their games. So there's usually a bunch of like huge major title announcements at these sort of events. And kind of around when E3 happens, EA used to do their own thing called EA Play. And it would be like a physical event where you could get a ticket and come and play their games in person in LA. And twice they flew out a bunch of creators to these events to like play games early, not just Simmers, but like a bunch of other EA games too, like FIFA and stuff. Once it lined up with the Seasons release and the next time it lined up with the Island Living release. So with Island Living, they hadn't even actually announced the pack until the event. And they didn't even tell us. They like flew us out to play this pack early, but I didn't know what the pack was gonna be until we were there. In hindsight, I probably wouldn't recommend they do that order of things again, because it's very hard to make content when you can't prepare for it. And the whole point is that we would go there and film early access content, but whatever. Anyway, so when they actually announce the pack. They have like a staged thing going on. They've got like the lead producer, Sim Guru Lindsay is there. They've got like an interviewer and they play the trailer and there's a physical crowd. I was in the physical crowd of like Sims fans, but also some creators. They play this trailer and the crowd goes wild because we're all like screaming about mermaids and stuff. And then they're like, but wait, there's more. And they tease Realm of Magic. They tease that magic is coming to the game. The crowd goes wild. They're screaming, they're cheering. And then they're like, but wait, there's more. And they're like, mosquito stuff. <laughs> and that's all they said was just like the, the brand name. And we were all kind of like, huh? <laughs> What's that mean? Silence, crickets. And like the contrast was so stark because everybody had just been screaming about these two like huge new features. And then everybody's just like, what? Oh my God. When I look back on this, it makes me cringe like so deeply inside. But it, but it is funny. Honestly, for that alone, it's iconic. Top of the list. Okay, but after that, we got Tiny Living. And Tiny Living is one of my favorite packs literally ever made ever for The Sims 4. This is an iconic build mode pack. It's got a bunch of new furniture, good like small, space furniture and also a lot of really cute modern like kind of fun and colorful stuff as you can see. The cast is also some of their best they've ever done. I don't know if you can tell but when you compare like the amount of things added here versus those older packs there's like three times as much creative sim in this pack and the main gameplay feature is sort of build mode specific. They added a new lot type called the tiny house and it counts how many tiles your house is and then you get different perks depending. So if you have a micro home for example it's only 32 tiles you get 
half the bills. Your sims get double skill gain when living in one. So it's like really, really overpowered gameplay wise. If you're trying to do like a legacy challenge, you can really, really succeed very early on because you can like double skill and relationship gain and stuff. Your plants grow twice as fast. It, it's really good. But they also added these new Murphy beds. And with these Murphy beds, your sims can like put them up in the wall or pull them down when they're trying to sleep in it. So it's good for small spaces, obviously. But your sims can die from them. There is a possibility of your sim pulling this bed down and it's squishing them to death. Oh my god, I love, I love a new death in a sims pack. I love the furniture in this pack. The cast is my favorite out of all of it so far. I really, really like Tiny Living. If you are at all interested in building in the sims, I would highly recommend this pack out of all of them. It's like the best one. But also if you're into gameplay and challenges specifically, like if you like playing the legacy challenge, the baby challenge and stuff like that, playing in a tiny house gives you a lot of perks that makes it a lot easier. So it's a really good tip for that. I'm going to put that at like the top of the must have. Oh, I haven't even done paranormal yet. Sorry. <laughs> but that one is really good. And then we got nifty knitting. And this one is actually also a fan voted stuff pack similar to laundry day, where we got to vote on like a few selections of ideas and then vote on concept art and stuff. And we ended up with all of this, which is some kind of cute, like knitted clothing, a bunch of like really cutesy, cozy craft room type furniture. So like think desks full of like paint and, and craft supplies, like craft carts and, and little like clutter sort of similar to that vibe. There's actually a lot more than you can see on this screen because this adds a knitting skill. So you can see a few of these things here, like these little bears and this little llama, this little octopus back there. With that knitting skill, your Sims can actually create a bunch more decor items and a bunch more clothing. So as they get better, they can knit more and more things. And there's really a lot that they can make. And the skill is really cool. Even the kids are doing it here. You can see some of these hats and like sweaters they're wearing were made from knitting. They also added rocking chairs in this pack, which was a huge addition. Everybody wanted rocking chairs for so long. And they added a couple things for elders. Elders can reminisce now. And beyond that, they also added Plopsy, which is kind of like Etsy, but in The Sims. It's basically like an online shop that you can have your Sims list their creations on, not just knitting, but like other crafty things they make. They can list on Plopsy and like sell online to make money. It's not really very profitable, I found, but it is fun to buy from. You can like buy other little crafty things other Sims have made. It's kind of cute because there's like baby onesies for, for babies in the bassinets. And I've bought those on there before and like given it as a gift <laughs> to like a new parent or whatever. I really like this pack. It actually has a lot more than any of the other stuff packs. I feel like Plopsy and the knitting skill are two major gameplay features. For that reason, I rank it really, really highly. I gotta put Mosquito back down. I can't. I'm sorry. I just can't. <laughs> I can't have it in must have. I just can't. But Nifty Knitting, I'm gonna put up at must have because it has so much to do. It's also really nice because it feels like it's got some stuff for elders to do. Obviously, like anyone can knit, but we don't really get a lot of things that are like elder focused type of hobbies, you know? So it's fun to have things that maybe appeal to an older crowd of Sims when most of the game is very targeted towards young adults. Out of every pack, Nifty Knitting and Tiny Living and also Paranormal, spoiler alert, top of the list, have the most gameplay. Again, shockingly, the last three packs <laughs> were the best ones, but Paranormal as well has way more gameplay than any of the other packs. These past couple genuinely feel like three or four times the size of the first packs. First of all, this pack has some amazing casts, so much cute stuff, also a good variety of things. It's got like some clothing and some hairs and stuff. Build mode though, Paranormal has my favorite couch and my favorite plant in the whole game. This couch and this hanging plant, also this tiny cow plant are all my favorite things out of like everything. And this wallpaper is really nice as well. But the gameplay in this is really cool. There's a new lot type, it's called a haunted house. And if you stay in it, your Sims will be haunted overnight by ghosts. Lots of weird kind of scary things happen and you can try and like stop the ghosts and appease them basically. You can also join the ghost hunter career. It's a freelance career. And with it, you can like go to other Sims homes and try and rid them of ghosts. And there's like three tiers, like an easy, medium and hard. And it pays really well. And they added a seance table. You can see it better in this like tiny image of the icon. But with that, you can like commune with the departed and you can also summon Bone Hilda. If you remember her from other games, she's like a skeleton maid. If you summon her, she'll help you clean up your house. I mean, seriously, this pack has so much more gameplay than any of the others. You compare all of that to like ice cream maker. It, it, there just is no comparison. If you're looking into buying just one stuff pack, honestly, I'd recommend one of these three, Tiny Living, Nifty Knitting, or Paranormal. I love toddler stuff, but it's not really at the same level.
level. It's it's probably like top of really good and bottom of must have, if that makes sense. But these three just have so much more in them than the others. I'd recommend those a lot more than like these bottom of the list ones. Now, obviously keeping in mind that you might be way more interested in spooky stuff than like toddler stuff, and that's totally fine. But I do think that toddler stuff has more to offer than spooky stuff does. So it's good to keep that in mind when picking one because they're all cool and all these different themes kind of appeal more to different people and stuff, obviously. But seriously, the newer ones are so much better than the older ones. So I hope this helps if you're looking into buying a stuff pack anytime soon. And if you're curious about my rankings for any of the other Sims packs, I've done one for expansion packs, game packs, and kits now, so I'll link those down below for you too. With that, I'm gonna end this right here though. Thank you so much for watching. Have the best rest of your day, and I'm gonna catch you all tomorrow, okay? Bye, everybody. I seriously love Tiny Living so much. It is my favorite pack. It's one of my favorite packs out of all of the packs. Like, I'd pick Tiny Living over a few of the expansion packs, if I'm being honest. I really, really like that pack.